Hello everyone and welcome to No Option Antics, where in this segment we'll be talking about option pricing. We'll try to discover where options actually get their prices from. So let's talk about it. Options, first of all, are, are priced on a per share basis. So whenever you look at a price of any option, that's the price per share. But the options are not sold by shares, they're sold in contracts. If you're working in the U.S. or Canadian markets, what you'll find is that options typically have 100 shares per contract. So if an option costs $2, one contract would equate to $200. If you're trading in other markets, you have to be careful because different countries have different amounts of, of shares per contract. As you can see here in the U.K. and Australia, you have 1,000 shares per contract. So let's talk about the main components of options pricing. One is the real value of the option, and the other one is time value. So let's take a look at what real value is. This is another term they use for real value. It's something called intrinsic value. It's the real tangible value of an item. So here's an example of real value. Let's say you have a stock trading at $42, and let's say you own a $40 call. Remember, the $40 call gives you the ability to buy stock at $40. So the real value of the 40 call is $2 because if the stock is trading at 42 and you have the ability to buy it for 40, you have $2 of an advantage or $2 of real value. This will be part of the option pricing. The other portion is time value. Now, time value is the the value that's outside of the real value of the option. Uh, if if you look at insurance policy, an insurance policy is all time value. There's no real value in an insurance policy unless something actually happens. So here's an example of time value. Let's say you've got the stock trading at $42. You own a 40 call, but the 40 call cost you $3. Well, as we remember from our last example, that the real value was $2 because we had the ability to buy the stock for 40. Everyone else had to pay 42. But if the option cost $3 and two of the $3 is the real value, that must mean that the time value is $1 or the remaining amount of that option value. So that's how your option gets the pricing. Now, let's talk about how time value is actually calculated. There's a couple of components of the time value. One is the time itself, the amount of time. Second thing is the volatility. And we're going to talk about these things. What does time mean? Well, the more time you have in an option, the more you pay for the option, plain and simple. Just like if you had an insurance policy. If you were looking at two different policies, one was a one-year policy, another one was a six-month policy, you would always pay more for the six-month policy. You would always pay more for the six-month policy. The more time you have in the option, the more you pay for the option, just like insurance. If you have one year policy, you're going to pay more than if it was just a six month policy. The other part is volatility. Now, there are two different types of volatility. One is the historic or statistical volatility. This specifically relates to, uh, relates to the stock itself. So if you're looking at historic or statistical volatility, it means how much can the stock move in a given period of time. When we're working with options, though, we're talking about something called implied volatility. All right, let's give you an example of implied volatility. Volatility, the implied volatility, is a measurement of uncertainty. All right, so if you look at it this way, if there were a news article coming out about a particular stock, whether it be uh, an FDA approval on a new drug possibility or earnings or something that was coming out tomorrow. There's a news event. Hey, we're making a news uh, announcement tomorrow. Does that tell you that the news is good or bad? It doesn't give you any, any indication as to what the news is or if it is good or bad. It only tells you that there's news coming out. That is uncertainty. All right? So the more uncertainty that's in the market or the more uncertainty that's on this particular stock, the higher the implied volatility of the options and the higher the cost of the options. Here's an example of implied volatility, and we'll relate it to earthquake insurance. Okay, I'm originally from Chicago, Illinois, and I'm living in Southern California right now.
Now, where would earthquake insurance cost more? Well, obviously, it would be Southern California. The reason why is because Southern California has earthquakes. The place moves. And just like your stocks, the more the stock moves, the more the option will cost you. So to summarize this, the more time you have in an option, the more it costs you. The more volatility you have in the option, the more they cost you, as well as the real value of the option. So join us for more education here at NoOptionAntics.com, at www.NoOptionAntics.com, or if you have questions, email us at info at NoOptionAntics.com. This is Peter Zamaya. Thank you very much, and we hope to see you soon.